has 1.4 million kilometers of roads. With that much open space, why does it always seem like someone is trying to get in your way? Because we have a lot of very bad drivers, that's why. To make our highways safer, we've taken the country's eight most abysmal motorists off the road, and we brought them here to the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Now, one person has already graduated from our educational program back onto public streets, but seven pathetic car handlers still remain, each trying to steer clear of the ugly title, Canada's Worst Driver. Canada's Worst Drivers were nominated by you. Jody, an extremely intimidated mother of two from Manitoba, oh, this is what I hate. was nominated as the country's lousiest driver by her exasperated husband, Sam. Michael, an over-analytical slowpoke from Vancouver, was brought forward by his pal, Eric. Oh, that's the best job I can do. Karen is a housebound housewife from Ontario. I can't go to the store by myself. I can't visit my children. She was made a candidate by her nagging husband, Alan. Sean, a world-class computer game racer. Speed, it's yours to discover. Was hauled into our real world rehab by his niece, Milena. Henrietta never learned to drive properly. My main issue with driving is that I'm very nervous. Which is something her husband, Andy, is well aware of. I'll be here all day. Could be here for a week. Colin, a 20 year old street racer, was made a nominee by his friend, Jeremy. I like driving at a normal speed of like 150, 160. And finally, there's Shannon. I've had five cars, and I told each one within three to six months of having them. This reckless hellraiser was nominated as Canada's worst driver by her friend, Sarah. Every show, these bad drivers will make their way through several challenges designed to teach proper car handling skills in stressful situations. Brace yourself. Ah! This is our third episode, and we thought we'd kick this one off by bringing our bad drivers to a nice street like this one where they could have a quiet navigational challenge. Then we realized, oh no, that would not be safe. These drivers can't steer. They can't reverse. They can't go fast. They can't even go slow. And when they drove to our rehab center from Wasega Beach, they showed us they don't even understand basic road signs. Okay, that was a stop sign. The sign was so small, and we were going like 110. Jody, you have the right of way. Sean, just follow the road signs. The sign says do not enter, Jody. Road signs were created so the people maintaining our roads can communicate with us while we're driving. I just wish they had like a you are here sign. To see exactly how well Canada's worst drivers understand road signs, our head instructor, Scott Marshall, is showing the students seven signs. And they're easy ones, too, like deer crossing. Oh. Uh. Stay to the right. Oh my God. And there's a bridge coming. You know, I've seen that sign, but I've never actually known what it means. What about this one? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. It means slow-moving vehicle. Do you know what this sign means? Sean knows. Payment ends, turns to gravel. Sean gets them all right. The rest of the class isn't so educated. Take Colin, for example. He doesn't even know the sign for two-way traffic. Just uh, one way on each, like you can't, uh, it's one way and you, uh... This sign means two lanes will soon merge into one. Does it mean grade? Like on a grade? Colin's grade on road signs. See, I see that sign so much. It's just... Is an F. It means, uh... No, it doesn't mean that. Um... Ever since voluntarily admitting himself to rehab, Colin has been claiming he doesn't need to be here. You think you're a good driver? Oh, totally. If Colin believes he's a good driver, why doesn't he leave? Maybe it's because he can't follow the signs. Oh, you know less than half what the signs on the road mean. Um, the ones that he gave me. There was only seven. I mean, there's a lot more than seven signs, but... But you don't seem at all ashamed about that. That's cool. That's normal. 
Well, I mean, I mean, road signs is not. I mean, it's it's important, but you, we got to admit it's not some absolutely monumental. But I mean, it's it, absolutely monumental. You think so? If you, absolutely. You know what a do not enter sign looks like. But if you didn't know that particular yeah. one, it would be monumental. Yes. Mm, I'll agree. Yes. So it is monumental. Yeah. Another reason not to let Canada's worst drivers back onto public roads oh my is that on our courses, oh my they've proven to be disastrous. <laughs> and they're not taking responsibility for their collisions. You had it too narrow. There's no way someone is getting through those cars. You, you guys can tell me whatever you like. There's some parts that were impossible. Nothing we've given them has been impossible. But if they want it easier, no problem. Their next challenge will be... driving in a straight line. Are you nervous? Oh. Henrietta shows us how it's done. She drives along the platform, across the yellow line... Yeah, where's reverse? ...and back again. On her return, though, Henrietta can't go in a straight line. She needs to repeatedly readjust her vehicle. That's all I was that one. When Michael does the test, Eric provides a soundtrack. <laughs> Michael finishes perfectly, and so does Shannon. Good to go. Thanks, all good. But Sean... You just buckled in, right? As usual, thinks this straightforward challenge is a race. Yellow line, yellow line. And he nearly breaks his passenger's back flying off the ramp. Easy, 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 easy. And, oh, turn it off. F*** <laughs> off. <sighs> Holy crap. And you want to go home? When Jody gets behind the wheel, she is all business. Okay, I'm just gonna check the mirrors. Okay, check this one. Well, go ahead. Jody does go ahead just fine, but on her way back, she decides not to steer. Just keep my wheel straight. Jody is holding the wheel in a locked position, hoping to magically slide off the back of the ramp. <gasps> Instead, she slides off the side. Now what do I do? I don't know. Try and drive ahead. I don't think I'm gonna be I don't able think to. I'm gonna be able to, but try. No, I'm not gonna well, be able try. to. Well, try. See if you can. No, I'm not gonna. Well, be able then to. back up then. You have to put it in reverse to back up. Oh yeah. Give her hard. Go, 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 go. Go. Back up, back up, back up, back up. So why oh. weren't you using your mirror when you were backing up there? I thought if I kept my wheel straight. Well, why weren't you using your mirror though? Oh, I'm afraid if I kept my wheel straight, I should be able to do it. But I was wrong. Here's a good tip for bad drivers everywhere. <gasps> Don't just hold the wheel. Use it to steer. Oh, back up, back up, back up, back up. After the break, Canada's worst drivers get in a violent boxing match. Canada's worst drivers are at our driver rehabilitation center, struggling to get good enough to graduate back onto public roads. Here to help make the decision on who stays and who goes is our crack team of driving experts. Our head instructor, Scott Marshall, is joined by our high-speed specialist, Juliana Chioviti. You're really not getting anything that we're trying to help you with here. Insurance broker, Marcus Adjaman. 50% surcharge, that's, that's a lot of money. And Sergeant Cam Woolley of the Ontario Provincial Police. I really think if these guys don't learn something here, they're both going to be statistics. From this control center, our experts are able to monitor every challenge live. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to do a controlled skid on our command. In a very, very straight line, of course. Not like this guy. This challenge will test reaction time and teach the importance of staying in your own lane even while skidding. To let Canada's worst drivers know exactly when to slam on their brakes, they will be alerted to an emergency that is symbolized by this red light and by the voice of our driving instructor, Scott Marshall, who will say the all-important word stop at the last possible second. When, Scott? Stop. You didn't tell me it was going to be that close. Collins first to lay down a skid mark. Instead of following our instructions, Colin takes it upon himself to begin a jerky stop before the red light even comes on. Excellent. That's how it's done. It's called pumping the brakes. 
Uh, that's not how it's done, but that's what happened. He's supposed to slam on the brakes and skid. So he wasn't supposed to pump the brakes at all. That's uh, actually a myth, pumping your brakes. What you want to do is have threshold braking and have maximum braking effect without locking the steering. If you just pump the brakes and lock the steering, you've got no steering. Our world champion video game driver's next. In his living room, Sean knows exactly how to control a skid. But in a real car, Sean doesn't realize he can skid without steering into oncoming traffic. I just didn't take a straight slide that's going to stop the car. A straight slide stops Michael just fine. Stop! When Shannon roars toward the wall, we're worried she might crash into it for fun. If you don't already know, Shannon loves collisions. Do you like it? Hitting stuff? Yes. You like hitting stuff, don't you? I do. <laughs> but when I hit it, it was like a, such a rush. It was great. But, sorry. Yeah, that's your biggest issue. Actually, it's Shannon's second biggest issue. Number one is driving drunk. How many drinks now will you have before you, you leave the bar and, and get back in the car? Five? And you get back in the car? Not anymore. Does I she, don't. Does she do this? No, she doesn't drink anymore. We believe Shannon needs rehabilitation purely for her own health. Unbeknownst to us, though, it's growing into a much bigger story than that. This morning in the privacy of our confessional car, Shannon said, Maybe I do need help because, I mean, I'm going to have a child. Whoa, wait. Let's watch that again. Because, I mean, I'm going to have a child. Turns out, Shannon is four months pregnant. If Scott knew that, Shannon wouldn't be participating in this stressful test. Thankfully, before the red light comes on, Shannon bails. I'm sorry, but I don't want to hit that thing. You're telling some new secrets. Secrets? Yeah. What do you mean? We thought you came here just to become a better driver because you wanted to become a better driver and no other reason. And now you're telling the car confessional camera you have other personal reasons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Tell us. I'm having a baby. Congratulations. Thanks. And we didn't realize that. <laughs> so all of that talk of like, oh, I used to go out drinking and back into other That's cars. That's why I don't anymore. Well, congratulations. That's some responsible parenting. Thanks. Already. I try. Henrietta owns some fairly strong prescription glasses, but she doesn't wear them when she drives. Oh my it's worldly! wonder if Scott got danger pay for this one. Steady. When the red light comes on, instead of hitting the brake, Henrietta makes a prediction. Oh, oh, no, no. Bad reaction time. Yeah. It seems like he came awful close for me to get the brake on. Henrietta generously decides to return our car to the starting line. Oh, yeah, we're knocking them all down. <laughs> Let's just uh, talk about common sense here briefly. Don't drive away. You got stuff on your hood. Even with her bad vision, Henrietta can see this problem. I got boxes. The last person to take our skid test is Karen. On Karen's run, the red stopping light comes on, but Stop. Karen's reaction time isn't up to snuff. Okay, so I need to get faster feet. What Karen really needs to get is a sense of ownership behind the wheel. Break down, Simco. When she drives with her husband, Alan, who's employed as a traffic cop... Watch. Oh, sorry. Karen lets Alan take control of the vehicle. Put your nose out there and get behind that car. Karen doesn't think for herself at all. Get your signal on. She just follows Alan's orders. Block the lane. Pull up. Watch the curb. Put your right signal on and take your foot off the gas. Pull up and put the four ways on. To teach Karen a serious lesson about control, we're having her take the skid test again. Except this time, the red light will not come on and Scott will not tell her to stop. As the wall approaches, Karen can see she's running out of room, but instead of controlling her vehicle, she lets go of the wheel and shrugs. We're gonna say stop! She's still going! I'm following instructions here. The person you most often drive with is Alan. And he's oh. constantly giving instruction, isn't he? Uh -huh. And often, correct me if I'm wrong, sorry, Alan, often bad instructions? Yeah. So this lesson should be especially important for you. Don't listen to Alan. No. Well, you can listen to him all you want, but you have to believe your eyes. I was late today because of a fatality on, on a nearby highway. Uh, early this morning, a drunk driver crossed the center line and uh, struck some people coming the other way and killed, uh, killed both of them. So just because it's our right of way, or you can't always be waiting for a light or a signal, you've got to watch ahead. 
Alan micromanages me so much, I'm so used to waiting for instruction from him that I, I've got to understand that I own that wheel and I own both pedals and that is my car when I am driving it. Anyone who rushes to pack a vehicle for the summer vacation always winds up wishing they had taken their time. That's because if you just toss things in at random, well, the sleeping bag almost inevitably ends up causing a blind spot. And if you're in an accident, the contents of a loosely packed car can end up flying around like missiles. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is to pack up the family station wagon and hit, not the highway, but one of our infamous educational courses. The goal of this challenge is to simply get out of this quaint country camp spot. And if they've made too big of a blind spot when they pack the vehicle, they won't be able to do it. From here, it's a straight shot down this road. What's that? We have one of these idiot road ragers behind us. Let the idiot be an idiot. Who cares? Because the end point is right here. Except, oh dear, here comes an ambulance. Suddenly, driving well is as serious as a heart attack. Every year in Canada, 6,000 emergency vehicles are in accidents with drivers who should have cleared the way. Keeping composure under this stress is critical. Now, on a country road like this, an ambulance has the right of way. And now, I'm sandwiched between my idiot road rager and the ambulance. As soon as he's gone, I'm putting it back in drive. From here, all that's left to do is return down the road, park, and... <sighs> They're done. Our three married female drivers are consistently performing terribly. Thanks in part to the stress created by their husbands. Right, I've had enough. To see if these people can drive any better without their usual passengers, we're mixing up their partnerships for this next challenge. Karen, you're going to be doing this challenge with Eric. My no friend. problem. No problem. Alan is gone from the vehicle for you. Oh, that's actually a good thing. And Michael, you'll be doing it with Sam. And Jody will be paired with young Jeremy. When Jody drives with her husband Sam, he directs her. Just watch your mirror. I'm watching the front. I can't. He yells at her. Your way, your way, your way, your way, your way, your way. And he belittles her. Don't ask stupid questions. This may seem harsh to you, but Jody cherishes Sam's input, calling him totally supportive, and I couldn't have done it without him. Jody asks Sam to make almost every decision for her. Okay, now what? Now what? Okay, now what? Now what? Okay, now what? Now what? So today, how will Jody fare well, like, paired up with Jeremy? So that there is quite visibility so that we don't have too much height. Well, she immediately takes control. Okay, well, we'll try it. When they get going... Ready? Jody has clear visibility and a chance to prove she can drive on her own. But she pleads for Jeremy's constant input. Okay, now what? How do you want me to turn the wheel? Towards me? Towards you? Okay, all the way towards you. More? 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 Towards me? Now straighten up your wheels. When Jody gets going forward, she hears the road rager and stops dead in her tracks. It's okay. There's some branches. Confronted by the ambulance, oh, Jody realizes she's going to have to back up in a straight line. Go, 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 go. Go, back up, back up, back up, back up. Reverse. Jeremy explains Jody is going to have to steer. He even tells her which way to turn the wheel, but Jody spins it in the opposite direction. Towards you? Straighten up the wheel there. It takes Jody three and a half minutes to reverse down the road. When the ambulance limps past, she drives to her parking spot and finishes. It was a little bit uh, nerve wracking. Jody's gaining confidence, but she's still not solving her own problems. Karen's next. Like Jody, Karen's husband barks orders at her relentlessly. But unlike Jody, Karen doesn't ask for the advice. You want to put it in drive? No. Cut it slow now. What are you doing? Don't cut it. When I'm driving with Karen, I do go into a Jekyll and Hyde. For today's drive through the woods, Karen is paired with Eric. When they pack the vehicle, they create a few blind spots. Losing some center visibility, but... Unable to see, Karen backs up diagonally. Okay, we're cross-eyed. We're like this. We want to do this way. Oh, uh, okay. So forward. Forward. 
Instead of telling Karen what to do, Eric lets her make every decision. As a driver, it's not something she's used to. Gee, this is nice and calm. Karen remains calm with a road rager behind her and an ambulance in front of her. Okay, doctor. Karen reverses to avoid the ambulance, then parks the station wagon with ease. Put her in park. Thank you, Eric. That was great. You didn't scream at me once. Michael is the next driver to take a trip. When Michael and Sam pack the vehicle, Michael wants to be prepared for any emergency. So, first aid kit goes in last. Michael stashes the first aid kit on the roof. Trouble is, he forgets about it and drives away with it still up there. We get a lot of crashes from insecure loads. Can you see this mirror okay? Looks awesome. Where is this positive energy when Sam drives with Jody? The road rager behind Michael is exceedingly aggressive. I should know. For today's experiment, the part of the idiot road rager will be played by me. He can honk all he wants. I ain't going no faster. And since we are now in a wider spot on the road, I shall pull over and let Mr. Idiot go right on by. But before Michael can clear a path, he's faced with our emergency vehicle. If Dimwit here... We can back. We can back. When the road rager backs up, Michael pulls safely off the road. When the ambulance passes him, Michael finishes. Good job, Michael. Thank you. Except... <laughs> How about the first aid kit on the roof? Oops. Driving with a first aid kit on the roof is the automotive equivalent of running with scissors. That was definitely a bonehead moment. No questions asked. Irony of ironies, the irony of being hit by a first aid kit at 90 for the motorcyclist ain't gonna be funny. Right across Canada, it's at least a $110 fine, and if it damages anything, it, it goes on your insurance bill, too. Colin's next. Since meeting Colin, we've seen him do some stupid things. He intentionally trashed one of our courses, he abused our equipment, he mocked our efforts, and he lied to my face. You will not break any laws. Thank you. Speed limit 60. Right, let's just do double the limit. Cool, that's a cop. Guy, <laughs> okay, we were going 140. Colin loves breaking laws on our roads. Total number of tickets I've ever had is about 30. He should have more tickets, but because he's a police officer in training, Colin has an official ID card he likes to flash whenever he gets pulled over. I usually just say, oh, I'm uh, late for a test for my police foundations course at Durham College. Uh, by the way, did I mention I was in police foundations? When we show Sergeant Cam Woolley the tape, he is infuriated. Then, we show him Colin's bigger insult. I don't think cops are the smartest people out there. I think this tape will find itself to his uh, home police service, so they'll know he hasn't learned and that he is still a danger. For today's challenge, Colin has a new partner, Sarah. This is so awkward. To impress Sarah, Colin sticks his crotch in her face. While he's in rehab, Colin is driving on our insurance bill. We're covered for legitimate accidents, not acts of idiocy. This is called innovation. I call Colin on the walkie-talkie. Colin, get in the car and put your seatbelt on. <laughs> You're doing too good. That was idiotic. Colin gets in, but he won't buckle up until the approaching road rager makes him paranoid. Yeah, there's a cop car back there. It's okay, relax, relax, relax. When retaining composure becomes paramount, Colin panics and goes askew. Oh. Once Sarah talks him to safety, pull here, pull here, pull here. Colin races to the finish line. Wow. I think we're under six minutes, what do you think? Hi. It's time for Colin to get what's coming to him. Sergeant Woolley steps into his squad car and fires off an email to over 100 highway officers in Colin's home area. The message contains this video attachment I don't think cops are the smartest people out there. And very nice pictures of Colin's car and license plate. Just sent an email and video clip to police officers where Colin drives. Next for the packing panic is Sean. Along with his new partner, Alan. What none of us know yet is that when Colin drove, he rattled the battery cable loose. Okay. Ready to go? Battery's dead. Sean is a car guy. <laughs> and he thinks this is part of the challenge, but it isn't. We're good. Battery cable is loose. So, you know, we're impressed. Sean backs out with no problem whatsoever. In fact, he runs the entire course without behaving badly. 
Perhaps that's because he's sitting next to a police officer. Shannon is next to drive where the flies live. Last episode, Shannon had a revelation when she learned that going forwards in an S-Bend, then reversing straight backwards, can get a vehicle repositioned. On the camping course with Andy... Holy crap, I suck. Shannon almost immediately needs to reposition. Yeah, do the S situation. And with one quick S, Shannon's in the clear. When the road rager appears, Shannon rushes to get away. Go, oh, Jesus, you gotta pull over to the side. You know, those sounds make me very nervous. <laughs> Pulling over means parallel parking, which means Shannon's in trouble. Good enough. <laughs> As an alternative, Shannon decides to do the S thing in reverse without realizing that's what parallel parking is. There you go, buddy. When the ambulance passes, Shannon finishes. Henrietta's about to start, but she can't see the latch that opens the wagon. Do you know where that is? No. So she piles her cargo on the back seat all the way to the roof. Get it. That's against the law to pile it up like that. Well, it's a $110 fine in most of Canada for uh, uh, no clear view. Henrietta never has a clear view. When we gave Henrietta an eye exam last episode, her result was 2100. <laughs> I can't make it out, honestly. That means what Henrietta can make out from 20 meters, most people can see from 100. Driving through the woods, <laughs> piece of cake. Henrietta doesn't see her left turn. <laughs> when we send her back, I'm sweating like a dog. Henrietta misses the turn again. Ha! I go that way. Poor Henrietta can't see the forest for the trees. I thought we just backed out of here. When the ambulance appears, <laughs> hey, hey, get out of her, get out of her. Henrietta tries to hold her ground. She completely blocked the ambulance. So that, that's a disaster. Then Henrietta needs an emergency response vehicle of her own. <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> Wasn't Andy's fault this time, it was mine. <laughs> They'll need a tow truck, I think. When we come back, there's a racy lesson about driving distracted. A long, long time ago, back in the 1990s, a Toronto woman was pulled over while she was commuting on the highway because she was doing a little bit of typing on her laptop. When the story got out, people were horrified. Nowadays, though, it seems like everybody is sending emails and text messages on their cell phones while they drive, and no one's upset. But that does not mean it's safe. The next exercise for Canada's worst drivers should teach them that multitasking has no place behind the wheel. We created this challenge last episode specifically for our first graduate, Matt. It proved so effective in teaching him the dangers of distracted driving. And you have to always pay attention and be careful. We're doing it again. We've set up a simple circular course which Canada's worst drivers will go around and around at just 20 kilometers an hour. While going loopy, they have to put on a CD, eat a sandwich, and have a drink. Oh, I really hate when people do this. They also have to make a phone call. Whoa, we're getting loose here. And finally, they have to put on a little lipstick. Perfect. Ready for my date. Doing all that causes Sean to hit 18 of our 45 road markers. We're only doing this test with people who need this particular lesson, and Colin definitely needs it. While driving, I eat subs, I drink, definitely the CD thing. Even though Colin clobbers his way around the circle, he refuses to acknowledge the lesson. I'm talking to the master distracted driver. That's what I do. It is annoyingly childish. I don't need to feel manly. Oh, yeah. Nice. A little bit on the edge there. For pregnant Shannon, this lesson is twice as important. At home in Calgary, Shannon sometimes won't notice green lights because she's too busy talking on the phone and curling her hair. No wonder this 22-year-old has written off five cars. I do all of the things while driving. I'm talking on the phone, eating, doing my makeup. It's not my color, I have to tell you. I definitely now have a sense of how much worse I drive while doing these things. Shannon had better change her ways, or Karen might report her to the police. 
if, if I'm in the passenger seat, I grab the cell phone and I call them in. That's right. Karen, a fourth-generation police wife, tells on drivers if she sees them applying makeup. Yeah. Especially women with the mascara and the, and the lipstick. Why not tell on the men applying lipstick? Manage it. Sort of. Not very well. But Michael sums up our point very well. Anybody who's stupid enough to try to adjust makeup while driving is, at very best, an unmitigated fool. And I am not applying that just to women. There are lots of guys who wear makeup these days, let's face it. It's easy to forget that getting gas is actually extremely dangerous. Pulling up at the pumps requires maneuvering talent and patience. Two things our students have very little of. Let's hope this next challenge doesn't have an explosive ending. Welcome to Canada's worst gas station. Your next challenge is simply to get gas. The purpose of this challenge is to test our driver's parking ability and their etiquette. Our gas station has two entrances, here and here. Someone will end up running on fumes because we only have six pumps, but seven drivers. And before this even begins, I want to remind you that getting gas is a mission. It is not a contest. It is not a race. And with that, everyone races to their vehicles. Start your engines. <laughs> Calm down. Three of our pumps are already being used. The people with the best chance of getting the remaining three pumps are the drivers on the outside edge. Get gas! When everybody backs up, Sean in the middle sees an opening to his left. Go straight right there. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. You're good, you're good, you're good. Ah! In front of Sean, Karen follows Alan's advice. My side. And winds up blocking the entrance. Oh, 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 causing a lineup of cars. At the other entrance, Henrietta's also causing a jam. I'm not gonna be able to make the turn. Yeah, yeah, I heard back up there, back up there. <laughs> so, Henrietta backs up without looking. Stop! Whoa. Ah. Back at the other side, Karen ignores her husband and drives in successfully. Karen pulls into one pump as Sean pulls into another. Woo! No one can get to this pump, though, because Henrietta is still blocking the entrance. While everyone waits for the Cadillac with the canoe to leave, Jody drives over obstacles, cutting in front of Shannon. Looks like you got jacked there, buddy. I did get jacked. And Henrietta finally gets lined up to enter the gas station. You got a pump right over there. If you get in there, you got a pump there. Henrietta's going for that slot. Hurry up. Go, 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 go. Henrietta, you're done. With all the pumps full, the only thing to do is wait. Jody in the white car is prepared to do just that, but her husband Sam wants to launch an aggressive attack. Because they have to leave, they have to back up, then these cars have to leave, then you can just pull right in there. Okay, and then okay, back okay, up okay, okay. It's quiet, you got lots of time. I'm explaining to you what to do. Shannon is here. Michael is right behind her, and in the green truck here, Scott starts his engine, preparing to leave. And he's gonna have to come through Shannon. Oh, crud. Go, Scott. Don't move. Scott can't move. He's been wedged in by Henrietta and Karen. Well, is somebody going to help him out? I'm not taking my gas out of there and moving. You guys will run me over if I do. When we come back, there's fireworks at the gas station. Back up, back up, back What's up. The car behind me? I can see it in the mirror! Canada's worst drivers are at a pretend gas station demonstrating their parking skills and their driving manners. So far, Sean, Karen, and Henrietta have all made it to a pump, but the ladies pulled in so tight, Scott's green truck is now stuck. He's got to get out of this spot. If Scott ever gets out, Shannon should be able to take his pump. Finally, Henrietta does the honorable thing and backs up. Good thing that she left her gas cap open, because a 12-year-old wouldn't do that. When Scott leaves, Shannon moves in with Michael hot on her tail. Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm getting gas, I'm getting gas, I'm getting gas. Be careful, don't this car, Shannon. Yeah, I got gas. <laughs> <laughs> go, Shannon, go. 
I don't think we're getting any gas today. I guess I'll get out and pump my gas. Nearsighted Henrietta is still so focused on backing up, she doesn't see that Scott's already moved to the garage. Oh, hey, what's this? When Eric sees what's happening, he wants to steal Henrietta's pump. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, these guys are What's he doing? Ew, no, Michael, get out of here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Isn't that your spot, Henrietta? That's right. You better work this out with Michael because now he's in your spot. Michael! Yes? You have to back up again. I have to go back in there. Ah. Oh, good grief. While everyone jockeys for position, Sam continues to plot moves that Jody is incapable of making. Just pull up alongside Colin and back into the spot. Yeah, right. That's going to be easier said than done. If Jody does what Sam is describing, this is how she'll end up completely ass backwards to the pump. Well, you don't have to back in. You just got to stick your ass in there and just put the hose in this filler. You don't have to be straight. Before Jody can try to execute that ridiculous idea, the black car heads out, making Colin back up. You know, pull ahead alongside the Cadillac. Alongside the Cadillac. Get over there. I am. Don't be bossy. Now what? She just needs the parallel is all she needs to do. Pull up alongside the Cadillac. English, Jody. No, it's not. It is. Pull alongside the Cadillac is English. Okay, I did. This isn't alongside the Cadillac. While Jody gets in position, crank it over towards the barrier. The black car that just left passes Colin in the opposite direction. Now that black blocker car, now back into the gas pump, is here to challenge the nerves of our students by repeatedly getting gas without good manners. Perfect. Get in there. Get, go, 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 go. Get your ass in there. Get it in there. <laughs> Oh, that's sneaky. Jody, you took too long. That's ass, Jody. Michael is here, but the only two cars that will be leaving this gas station are over here. We have to come in from the far side, Michael. Yeah, I just realized that. Back up to alongside Sean. Back up to alongside Sean. As Jody goes back to her original position, Michael arrives behind Colin. No way. What is he doing? No way. I'm not letting Michael out of this spot. Colin's gas tank is on the right rear of his vehicle, making the pump he's guarding useless to him. So he wants to switch spots with Jody. Hey, Jody, we will go there, and then you can come there. No. We'll slide in and back up. No? Colin's stakeout spot is blocking the entrance, and Scott in the green truck is ready to leave. We got to wait for him. Yeah, true. Don't that. Jody is well clear of this traffic jam, but Sam wants her involved. The honk at him. In the building chaos, I tell Colin to move. He's a valued customer of mine. <laughs> He's a valued <laughs> customer. <laughs> oh, that's good. We've been waiting for the spot for a really long time. Move. Yeah, we're customers too, you know. Instead of backing all the way out, Colin pushes forward, being sure to block Jody's access to the pump. Now what? How long does it take to pump gas, buddy? This station needs traffic lights. This station needs Colin to move his station wagon so Jody can get gas. Finally, he does move. Go ahead, Jody. But not far enough for Jody's liking. Pull up alongside Colin back in and put your pump in. I can't do that. For the second time today, Jody, you got plenty Colin squirms back. halfway out of his car while it's still running. You're good, Jody, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Turn that way. Turn your wheels. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Watch the car behind me. I can see it in the mirror. Hey, don't you even holler at me. With tempers boiling, Jody gets out to pump gas and end this nightmare. But sadly, she hasn't properly parked yet. You can't stay parked there. You're blocking my entrance and exit. Oh, they're not going to let her park there. Because oh. she's blocking the lane. Right. You need to actually park properly before you get your gas. Jody has so much space behind her. In comes Mr. Canoe Head. The Cadillac is able to pull in. Colin's getting combustible. Ready to jump. He loops around the gas station, hoping to be next in line on the other side. But the blocker car beats him to the punch. Oh, oh, you oh turning. What is this guy doing? Brutal. Jody's latest parking job is still atrocious, but I just can't bear to see her suffer anymore. I'm not very happy about that, but I'll accept it. You're perked. Thank you. Totally set us up there. 
Yeah, maybe I should go Snake Michael still. Yeah, go, go, go. Try it. Think so? With the Cadillac pulling out, Colin gets back to the east entrance just in time to cause another fracas. Michael has to move now. <laughs> so, Michael moves. Go for it, go for it. Right to the open pump. I don't think we can do it. Parallel park. No, no, I don't think we can do it, period. To make sure he can't do it, Colin cuts Michael off from behind. Stop, stop, stop. Back it up, guys. Back up. Back it up. Hey, Tom. OK, we can't move now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Will you, will you two please back up a little? Back. Oh, hey, Michael, you see the truck behind us? Maybe backing up isn't a great idea right now. You have three feet to back up. Why don't you back up? What's your issue? All right, three feet, we'll take that. Unless somebody moves, nobody moves. Colin gets gassed for his karma. Oh, boo. Brutal. And Michael gets gas for his car. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. You're in. The point of this is to try and actually show us that you can drive in a conscientious manner. It wouldn't have come to that if we'd have just pulled in there and ended it, but we let Jody go, so I'd say that's pretty Oh, so because you did a good deed, you're allowed to be cruel to someone else? No, I'm just simply pointing that out. Okay, great. So you were nice once, and then you were evil once. I guess so. Well, so. I'd say the evil outweighs the good by a long shot. Next time we'll take the spot, then. You're showing your colors. Mm. After the break, someone will graduate. It seems almost wrong we're gonna put one of these people back on the public roads. But who? <laughs> Canada's worst drivers have demonstrated their vast driving knowledge. And they've shown us their exemplary driving skills. Which one of them has improved enough to convince our panel of experts they should be allowed to graduate and drive home? Cam, I'm going to turn it over to you. Cam, who's on your short list? My short list is uh, Michael and Karen. Scott also thinks Karen is the most improved driver here. And only I'll explain why. The last of gas, easy enough. And she didn't argue with her husband. She packed her car well. She left out enough of a hole at the back to be able to see out her rear view mirror. She remained calm. Marcus, uh, Marcus, I'm getting... I, I gotta say something. I can give you Michael. I, I would feel confident giving him his keys back. Karen, I can't believe you mentioned her. She went right through the wall, supposed wall of the boxes. She learned the lesson. I will say that about her. When you put it down to who improved the most, Michael's still a nutty professor. Uh, I think Karen is definitely the most improved. She would like to stay on and actually learn more. Do I want everybody to stay? Absolutely. Everybody should stay here. But we have to let someone go. We gotta stop fighting. <laughs> we actually have to stop fighting and yeah. come up with a name. Somebody's going back out on the roads. Who's it gonna be? One name. Michael. I'm saying Michael. Karen. Karen. We're still fighting. <laughs> I hold the tie-breaking vote. I know who I'm gonna graduate. Okay. We've reached the end of the third episode here at Canada's Worst Driver. It's time for someone to get their keys back and drive home. So many goals remain unachieved here. Colin. You've yet to change your attitude. And Jody, you still haven't really learned how to back up properly. So the person who is going to get their keys back is the person who got exactly what they came here for, a newfound confidence and a better driving relationship with her husband. Yeah. Karen. <laughs> Even though you did drive through and smash our wall of boxes, you are shockingly the most improved driver here. You're not joking. I'm not joking. <laughs> You're our newest graduate. Congratulations. Oh, so Congratulations. oh my lord. <laughs> Shocked, Michael? I never saw that one coming. Oh, me neither. Not did I. No. Holy smokes. If Karen isn't Canada's worst driver, who is? Going through rehab has done me an immense amount of good. When we met Karen, she'd forgotten how to drive properly, partially because her traffic cop husband wouldn't let her think for herself. Block the lane. 45 degrees. Uh -huh. Since being here, Karen has learned her lessons as a driver, and Alan has learned his lessons as a passenger. What I've learned is let Karen do it on her own. Keep my mouth shut because the driver should have the control of the car. In this episode, Karen proved she can drive without her husband. I can't believe she did it. And she proved she can drive with him. Now we cooperate. I don't give orders. And talk to each other like civil adults. 
Okay. All right, I did it. We've gotten two lessons out of this. Now I can go out on my own. Freedom that I haven't been able to enjoy for quite a few years. Karen Carson, our newest graduate. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. I'm horrified, I'm horrified. There's a hands-on swerving lesson. I don't think that could be done. A navigational challenge. So totally mixed up and lost. <laughs> and one unforgivable piece of mischief. Sweet. Like, what are you people, children? Are you 12 or something?